for he whom did that. Alleluia. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen. Alleluia. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of the Holy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant we beseech thee that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Altogether, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for a while. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today is Friday of the third week of Easter. Our presider for this evening's Mass is Reverend Father Herbie Santos. Please stand.
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and divinity and wisdom and strength and honor. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who have come to know the grace of the Lord's resurrection may, through the love of the Spirit, ourselves rise to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belong to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days, he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask to the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias, came in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go for this man, is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, laying his hands on him. He said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from the eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. 
he stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify Him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Please stand to honor the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. One time I remember concelebrating a Mass with an old priest. And during the Mass, the priest suddenly lost consciousness. Ginigising namin siya, pero hindi siya magising-gising. Natakot kami, no? There were some doctors who were hearing mass who ran to the sanctuary. We had to carry him out, and we thought that he had a heart attack or he had a stroke. But it turns out that he had low blood sugar because he didn't eat. Hindi siya nakakain ng umagang yun. So, once he regained consciousness, he was given a drink and something to eat, and he immediately recovered. I remember this also happened to a fellow biker. No? We were biking during the pandemic. And uh, one of our fellow bikers, after going up a very steep incline, he felt very dizzy. He could not stand. No? He had to sit. And, and we were panicking because we thought he was having a heart attack. No? But it turns out he hadn't eaten. No? Hindi siya kumain no umagang yon. So one of our fellow bikers gave him an energy bar. No? And so he ate that, and he drank some water, and immediately he felt better. So what does that tell us? We need food. We need drink for strength and life. So when we choose not to eat, we skip meals, we skip breakfast, lunch, dinner. 
our bodies slowly become weak and sickly. In fact, one mark of a dying person is when that person stops eating. Minsan, tinatawagan ako, Father, can you come here to anoint ang aming lola o ang aming nanay? So, when I go there, I say, uh, why do you say that this person is already close to dying? Eh, kasi, Father, hindi na siya kumakain. Hindi na siya kumakain. So, we need food. But remember, we are not only bodies, we are also spirit and soul. And our souls also need sustenance in order to have strength. Jesus said in our gospel today, My flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you do not have life within you. Naintindihan ba natin ang sinasabi ni Jesus? Kung hindi mo kainin ang aking laman at hindi mo inumin ang aking dugo, wala kang buhay. Jesus is not joking. He is telling the truth. He is dead serious. And we need to listen to Him. And what is the point for us today? Our soul can live and be strong only if it receives the Eucharist regularly. When we do not receive the Eucharist, our souls are too weak to resist temptation. Our spirits easily succumb to despair amidst the trials of life. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, the more temptations we have, the more we should hear Mass. The more problems we have, the more we need to receive the body of Christ. It is very sad how many of us no longer put importance on the Mass. We would rather use the time on Sundays to have recreation or to do some work, and we justify it by saying, oh, we do our personal prayers anyway. Although prayer is good, it is not the Eucharist. It is the Eucharist that gives us strength. Why does the Eucharist give us strength? Because Jesus said, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This means when we partake of the sacred host, Jesus enters us. Jesus is in us and we are in Jesus. It is complete union. Hindi lang natin kasama ang Diyos. Sinasabi natin, oh, kasama na atin ang Diyos. God is with us. No. Ang Diyos at tayo ay nagiging isa. And this gives us supernatural strength. How can evil, sin, and suffering overcome us when God is one with us? And this union with the risen Christ, when achieved through the Eucharist, persists even beyond death. That is why Jesus says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. Kaya nakakalungkot at daming mga katolikong hindi nagsisimba. What a waste. I remember when uh, the late Cardinal Francis Xavier Nguyen Van Thuan was arrested by the communist government in Saigon, Vietnam. In 1975, he was taken to prison where he was allowed to request only strict necessities like clothing and toothpaste. So he wrote home saying, please send me some wine as medication for stomach pains. Of course, the people outside 
the faithful understood what he meant. So they sent him a little bottle of mass wine. It was labeled medication for stomach pains. As well as some hosts broken into small pieces. So the, the police asked the cardinal, do you have pains in your stomach? And the cardinal said, yes. And so they gave him the bottle. They said, here is some medication for you. So each day, with three drops of wine and a drop of water in the palm of his hand, he celebrated Mass. Those who were Catholics among the group of prisoners, they tried to stay together. And at 9.30 every evening, when the lights went out, everyone had to be lying down. So the cardinal bent over to celebrate Mass by heart, and he distributed communion under the mosquito nets. He made these tiny little bags from cigarette paper to protect the blessed sacrament. And at night, the prisoners took turns and spent time in adoration. And even the Buddhists and the non-Christians were converted to Christianity. The darkness of the prison turned into light. The cardinal was finally set free on November 21, 1988. He had been in prison for 13 long years, nine of which were in solitary confinement. Others would have lost the reason to live. But what gave the cardinal life was the Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, we must not waste this precious gift from God. I hope and pray that we develop a love for the Mass, so much so that we hear Mass not only online, not only on first Fridays or even Sundays, but rather hear Mass face to face every day. Because if we make it a habit, we will realize how much strength and life the Mass gives us. It is exactly what we need every day. And so it is good to ask ourselves, what can I do to make sure that I do not miss out on the beautiful gift that is the Eucharist every week? Let us spend a few moments in silence to reflect on the Word of God. Please stand. The Father gives us His own Son as real food and real drink at this altar. We can ask Him for all our needs in Christ, the source of new life. Let our response be, Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. That the Church may grow in appreciation of the Eucharist as the bread of life by celebrating the sacrifice of the Mass with greater devotion. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. That as a community we may not be idle in our life of faith, but every day seek God even in our difficulties and sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. That families, especially our children, may grow in the ways of grace through the constant reception of the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. That the sick may be strengthened in their faith by uniting their sufferings with the suffering of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. That our beloved dead may have the eternal life promised by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. In silence, let us now pray for our own personal intentions, most especially for all of the intentions that are now being offered in this Mass. For all of these, our intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Father, sustain our lives through the Eucharist. Heavenly Father, you gave us the body and blood of your Son as food and drink for our journey. Grant that through our union with him, we may be united with one another as members of his body. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. In humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, in your sacrifice. Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the crucified is risen from the dead and has redeemed us. Alleluia. Please stand. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel as we pray the Novena Prayer to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. All together, Divine Jesus, you have said, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Behold me kneeling at your feet, filled with a lively faith and confidence in the promises dictated by your sacred heart and pronounced by your adorable lips. I come to ask this favor. To whom can I turn if not to you, whose heart is the source of all graces and merits? Where should I seek if not in the treasure which contains all the riches of your kindness and mercy? Where should I knock if not at the door through which God gives himself to us and through which we go to God? I have recourse to you, heart of Jesus. In you I find consolation when afflicted protection when persecuted, strength when burdened with trials, and light in doubt and darkness. Dear Jesus, I firmly believe that you can grant me the grace I implore, even though it should require a miracle. You have only to will it, and my prayer will be granted. I admit that I am most unworthy of your favors, but this is not a reason for me to be discouraged. You are the God of mercy, and you will not refuse a contrite heart. Cast upon me a look of mercy. I beg of you, and your kind heart will find in my miseries and weaknesses a reason for granting my prayers. O sacred heart, whatever may be your decision with regard to my request, I will never stop adoring, loving, praising, and serving you. My Jesus, be pleased to accept this my act of perfect resignation to the decrees of your adorable heart, which I sincerely desire may be fulfilled by me, by all your creatures forever. Sacred heart of Jesus, I know that there is but one thing impossible to you, to be without pity for those who are suffering or in distress. Look upon me, I beg you, dear Jesus, and grant me the grace for which I humbly implore you through the immaculate heart of your most sorrowful mother. You have entrusted me to her as her child, and her prayers are all powerful with you. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. After the Mass, you may avail of the Sacrament of Confession. Please take note of our regular confession schedule flashed on the screen. The Couples for Christ, North B, 6B chapter, is inviting all married and soon-to-be-married couples in the upcoming Christian Life program entitled A Servant's Heart. The eight seminar, series seminar will help couples develop deeper awareness of God's call to spiritual development and transformation. This will start tomorrow, April 20, until June 8, 2024, from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at the PLDM Centro Divino. For more details, please inquire at the parish office or approach any CFC member. You are invited to attend the vigil in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament to be led by the Adoration Nocturna Filipina tomorrow, April 20, after the 6 p.m. Mass here inside the church. We are privileged to have a beautiful Adoration Chapel in our parish. However, this comes with a great responsibility. Having Jesus exposed in the monstrance, there should at least be two adorers present at all times for the Lord must never be left alone. In line with this, 
we cordially invite everyone to spend at least an hour of daily vigil at our Blessed Sacrament Adoration Chapel. There are still time slots that have no adorers. Please sign up for the following available time slots that are flashed on the screen. Could not these words of our Lord be applied here? Indeed, this is the will of my Heavenly Father that everyone who looks upon the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. Him I will raise up on the last day. Sign-up commitment sheets are available at the parish office or you may contact the numbers also flashed on the screen. For more information on any of the parish activities, please inquire at the parish office or through the PLDM FB page, Messenger. Thank you for your attention. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, Michael, the, the archangel, archangel, defend us in battle. battle. Be our, our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May, May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And, and you, O Prince, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in the celebration. Good evening.